YouTube, welcome to my channel, Anna Bella, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Netflix film, Rebecca. Why on earth we need another version of it when we've got so many really, really good ones? And I mean, the 1940s one, Alfred Hitchcock, all in black and white, works beautifully because it is in black and white. But there's also the Charles Dance one, that's from 1997, equally good. And there is the novel itself, written by, everybody knows, Daphne du Maurier, and it was published in 1938. It's one of the best novels in the world, period. Last night I dreamt I was at Manly again, or back at Manly again. And we loop, we end where we begin, we begin where we end. It is a brilliant novel. It is really, really good, and in fact you can compare it to Jane Eyre. It is that good of quality. It is, you know, to Charlotte Bronte's epic Jane Eyre. You can compare it like for like, and it's almost like an update of Jane Eyre. One of the main features of why Rebecca is so good is we have a character who is talked about by everybody, but never, ever seen. That is Rebecca herself. Also, the second Mrs. De Winter's name, both her first name and her surname are never said in the book. It's genius. You also have Mad Woman in the Attic and also Servant Gone Wobbly. In Jane Eyre, you've got Bertha, wife, and then you've got Mrs. Poole, who looks after her. In Rebecca, you have Rebecca herself, who you never see. Then you have Mrs. Danvers, who is creepy, 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 creepy. Watch the Alfred Hitchcock version of Rebecca. It is awesome. Anyway, moving, we're supposed to be talking about the Netflix one. The Netflix one is good purely because it spends so much time on Monte Carlo they really flesh that out with light with color with scenery beautiful absolutely beautiful there are several motifs in Rebecca that we have to look for we have to look for ivy is there ivy on Mandalay and there was there was even ivy on the second Mrs De Winter's bedspread which is so important because Mandalay is supposed to be alive like a house possessed it's supposed to be creepy, creepy, creepy. Are there enough R's? And people think, why on earth do we need to worry about the amount of R's? Because that's how Rebecca still remains current. Is there an R on her hairbrush? Is there an R on her hanky? Is there an R on her bedspread, on her dressing gown, on her table? Everything. It's like Rebecca is still alive, even though she's no longer there. And there were. So they get big points for that. Are there later on? Do we get birds? Yes, I know Alfred Hitch Hitchcock did another film about birds, but there are birds in Rebecca, like Rebecca's spirit. Do we get that? Is there the boathouse? See, there are key things that have to happen to make Rebecca work as a novel. Everybody knows them. They're the staples of this book. Brought to film. And yes, they did do them, but there was so much light. Bandley wasn't gloomy enough. I know people, we did have that that wonderful scene in the rain with Maxim's sister and the grandma who's like, she's not Rebecca, who is this woman? She's not Rebecca, I want Rebecca. You know, we did have that great scene and the rain was pouring and I, th I really liked that, I thought that was well done, but it wasn't, Mandley itself wasn't gloomy. It does have, there are light bits at Mandley, but it's supposed to have this gloom and it wasn't quite autumnal enough and it needed to be could be because i'm currently living in october in the uk and we've got nice autumn going on here but mandley needs to have that yes they did have the ivy up the wall um growing on mandley's walls outside but it didn't have gloom need a little bit more gloom a bit too light and they also rushed the ending but we're not there yet so you've got to have these motifs. We had Ivy, we had the R's, we had the creepy Mrs. Danvers, played wonderfully by Kirsten Scott Thomas. Brilliant. She's a dame and it shows she's epic. Really well done. Did we have flames as a motif? Yes, we did. We had candles, we had light, we had the beautiful thing that I'm not going to talk about. I'm going to hold off on that because that's, that's coming in the end. You have to have certain things to make Rebecca work. And one thing they really did really well was at the beginning in Monte Carlo was the cards that Maxim kept giving the second Mrs. De Winter. Come to tennis, come to lunch, come to this. I really liked that. They spent so much time and really fleshed out the beginning of the book in this one. 
beautifully that when you got to Mandley I felt that they were rushing stuff you didn't feel the slow creepiness you didn't have the scene where Mrs Danvers says oh yes this is her desk you this is where you write your letters but they did have all of Rebecca's mail still there yes you have to have it because even though Rebecca is dead she's still alive and she's still in the house and it's creeping you out because Danny's keeping her alive you have to have all these things. We had Frank, who was sympathetic. We had to have Jack there. We had to have Ben, even though his part was smaller. You have to have all these things. Then you move into the section where you're in the boathouse and you have the lights. And then you have fire in Mandalay. I'm not talking about the fire. I'm talking about fire in the fireplaces. For when it turns into like a creepy mystery, it's like, why did Rebecca go to the doctor? Could it be an abortion or something else? Dun, dun, dun. You have to have all these motifs through. They did give Mrs. the second Mrs. De Winter more to do with actually going to the doctors in Harley Street and finding out that it was a female reproductive cancer that Rebecca had. And Rebecca is such a dominating character throughout the whole novel, even though we never ever actually meet her. This is just all people talking about her keeping her living even the servants, even Frith, that's like the butler, um, head butler. So you've got all of these things that just keep her alive, even though she's dead. Um, I'm going to talk about the ending. I really liked this version where you had, you know, the trial and we'd done all of that. Because remember, the whole purpose of this novel is the second Mrs. De Winter actually gets a murderer off. Yes, Rebecca may have manipulated Maxim to kill her, but she wanted to destroy him. Remember what Jack said about her ability to ride her father's horse and make it froth with blood. She was always in control. She knew exactly what she was doing at all the time. Rebecca was a thoroughly modern woman, even though we've never actually met her. She's fascinating and it's quite interesting that you have the line that the second Mrs. De Winter has lost her innocence. She's no longer the silly little fool. We didn't actually have any um, bits where Maxim wipes off her lipstick because he, he didn't marry her for lipstick and lace. And that's quite interesting with this new ending, which I am going to talk about. Okay, they did the trial, but it felt rushed. They kind of bungled some stuff. I'm loving, one scene I really liked was the drive of the car going up, that's the cat coming in, going up towards Mandalay and you think it's the sunset and you think it's going to be all happy, but no, Mandalay is on fire, like Fawnfield is on fire in Jane Eyre, yeah, yeah, Jane Eyre references to death. Um, and Maxim is supposed to run up the stairs and Danny is supposed to be at the top of the stairs. She's like, come down, come down, Mrs. Danvers, don't kill yourself. She flops over the banister and drops dead and is, dies. Maxim then comes down the stairs, the stairs collapse, he then gets burned and he's not supposed to be able to have any children. That is the book ending. In this version, they had Danny by the sea on a rock, which I thought was very apt, like she died, she drowned. She was literally drowning in Rebecca all the time. So it's like when you read Rebecca, Rebecca died drowning. Well, all these characters that are still alive are drowning in her after presence, even though she's no longer living and breathing. Danny literally, Mrs. Danvers, literally just jumps off that, that and falls into the sea. I liked that, but it was very different because it then affected Maxim. Remember, Maxim is a murderer. It's not like Mr. Rochester in Jane Eyre, who was fooled by his father and his father-in-law into marrying a mad woman. And he actually treated Bertha quite well. You know, he didn't put her in bedlam. He could have done and taken up with the mistress full time. He didn't do that. He kept her at home. He was honourable. That's if, just don't read Wide Sigasso, see. Um, he was all the way through presented as an honourable man, scarred. Maxim is a de winter he's cold he's got this cold temper and you're not quite sure whether he had that temper before he met rebecca i suspect he did and he's sort of like a, i think that rebecca thought about maxim like i'm going to ride this dominant man and put a bridle in him and make him froth with blood yeah there's a lot of red references in rebecca obviously um so you've got danny she's 
drowned. You then have, in this version, they then go to Cairo and you've then got the second Mrs. De Winter wearing lace and wearing lipstick and making love to Maxim and looking for a home. Last night I dreamt I went to Manly again. Oh, we've looped the whole thing. Woo! Um, it is an interesting ending. It Did it empower or did Miss, the second Mrs. De Winter turn into Rebecca? Did she sort of like lose that innocence and become her? Like uh, possessed and Maxim has got a Rebecca that he can tame? Who knows? It is so ambiguous, this version. I mean, it's based on the novel, hence the ending, which is rather rhubarb. Um, it should end with Maxim not being able to have children because she should end as it begins. She starts off as a companion in, um, not in Cairo, I've forgotten where it was, it'll come, in the Algarve, somewhere like that. And she should end as a companion, only to her husband. That's the whole cycle of Rebecca, that's what makes it literary perfection. There is one thing that Rebecca is, it's almost the perfect novel. You can compare it to Jane Eyre and it stands up. Rebecca is a hell of a novel about a character that we don't actually meet. We have to make up our own minds about her. She's one of the strongest written female characters to ever exist. And even the second Mrs. De Winter is actually quite a strong character because she comes into her own towards the end. And that's what makes it so powerful because Rebecca has empowered another woman from the grave. Yeah. Um, another thing I really liked about the Netflix version, I liked all the time that they spent um, before coming to Mandalay. I loved that. I also liked the look that Maxim gives to second Mrs. De Winter. She's coming down the stairs dressed as Rebecca. His eyes hardened. And it's really interesting to sort of see how everybody would think that this fuming man was that they would interpret his anger as actual depression that's really kind of bizarre um but they did it is of its time it was written in the 1930s you get a sort of reflected quality of 1930s life um within it it's brilliant it's one of the best novels ever written because you've got but it also speaks about class because second mrs de winter marries up she's like genteel poverty she's marrying up she's never run a home or a big grand house before it's completely alien so you've got all of these class issues that are being explored but actually did maxim marry her because he could control her when in the end he ends up being the one controlled by the second mrs de winter because she's looking after him because he can't have children it's going to go to um his sister's children um, and the second Mrs. De Winter is just going to be his carer slash companion for the rest of his life. That is the book ending. The f Netflix film changes that and you're not quite sure whether Max has sort of gained a second Rebecca, but in a more loving Rebecca. It's almost like the second, it's almost like in this version, the second Mrs. De Winter has become a more empowered version of Rebecca who has got control of herself but also has got a loving husband that she's managed to sort of tame and um keep it, it's bizarre because maxim then loses some of his virility which is really kind of weird because in the book he does anyway literally but he's still maxim in this version you're not quite sure whether they both sort of still they're both drowning in rebecca um and it's interesting that She's now got the sleepwalking stuff because she's effectively saved her husband from the noose. Um, but like her husband was sleepwalking because he killed his wife. Anyway, and I'm loving the fact that they had the double doors entrance to Rebecca's sort of wing. It's like um, Mrs. Danvers put them in the east wing because it's smaller, but the west wing is all big and Rebecca-like. Yeah, it's creepy. It should be creepy. You should have slightly lesbian vibes going off but they didn't really kind of do that. They did do it when she was holding up. She's like, look how tall he would have been in that and this. Yeah, it should have those creepy little moments. And you're not quite sure, but they made it crystal clear in this adaptation that Danny was a lifelong um, governess slash servant slash maid that came with Rebecca to help settle her into this big house. And Rebecca just basically flipped the finger 
<laughs> to society of the time and that's what she did unfortunately the only thing that stopped her was cancer of the womb um eh, eh, eh. but that is literally why she is a character that stands for the test of time she flipped the finger to her whole social society within this book and this is why this book is so powerful and it's still talked about and we can compare it to Jane Eyre and we can literally rip it apart and put it all back together again because you've got that lovely cycle last night I dreamt I was back at Banderley again and we've looped the whole story we end where we begin anyway do check out the new Netflix version I rather enjoyed it though I do think Lily James was possibly ghosting with the whole Dominic West business but I'm not going to go into that um, I really found it quite enjoyable though I did think that they perhaps made it a tad too light and not so gloomy once they got to Mandalay they really sort of lost the, they, they, they then sort of struggled the Monte yeah Mo the Monte Carlo bit was really good and fun and they had a whale of a time there but then once they got to Mandalay they really struggled with the social class and restrictions of Maxim's life and you feel that Maxim becomes far more distant and he's supposed to be distant um, from his wife but you don't really feel that supported and you're supposed to feel unnerved and all these things but you felt I felt that they struggled with that as the source material they didn't quite know how to play it um, for a modern audience in 2020 anyway please like comment and subscribe let me know what you thought about the Netflix's Rebecca film in the comments below stay safe everybody and wear a mask where you can keep socially distant and keep safe um, I'm currently walking without crutches, just so you know, but I'm still in my active boot. So that's my update. Do check out Netflix's Rebecca. Out of five, I would actually want to give it four and a half or maybe. Th yeah, I'm going to go with. Yeah, I'm going to go with three and a half, actually, because everything it had all the pieces there. But after Monte Carlo, it felt like it was just going through the motions. It didn't really set up Ben to be creepy either. It kind of lost its way. Kirsten Scott Thomas, four marks for a brilliant Mrs. Danvers. The chap who played Maxim, excellent. He had brilliant eyes at his wife that just turned like fiery blazes of doom. Yeah, awesome. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the Netflix um, Rebecca film from 2020. Thanks for the support. Bye.